Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the respiratory system. In this module, we will talk about respiratory embryology and congenital pathology related to the dysfunction in the embryogenesis of the respiratory system. Okay. Now, let us first talk about the various stages of the lung development. Now, lung development occurs in five lung development occurs in five major stages. And the initial development includes the development of the lung bud from the distal end of the respiratory diverticulum, which occurs in week four of gestation. So this is an important sentence which states that there is an initial development which includes development of the lung bud from the distal end of the respiratory diverticulum during week four. Is this clear? Now, the lung development occurs in five stages that is the embryonic stage, pseudoglandular stage, canalicular stage, saccular stage and the alveolar stage which is abbreviated as every pulmonologist can see alveoli. I'll again repeat embryonic stage, pseudoglandular, canalicular, saccular and alveolar. Now, let us talk about each stage in detail. Now, coming to the embryonic stage, which is the first stage, it is a period of between fourth week to the seventh week and the structural development that takes place is from the lung bud, there is formation of trachea, which then forms the bronchial buds. Okay, so there is basically formation of bronchial buds. These bronchial buds differentiate and form structures like the primary or the main stem bronchi the secondary or the lobar bronchi and the tertiary or the segmental bronchi. Is this clear? So it is basically the lung bud which gets converted into trachea, trachea into the bronchial buds and this bronchial buds give rise to main stem bronchi, secondary bronchi and the tertiary bronchi. Is this clear? Now the errors in the embryonic stage can cause tracheoesophageal fistula. So errors in the embryonic stage will cause tracheoesophageal fistula. Is this clear? Now, talking about the pseudoglandular phase. In the pseudoglandular phase, which lasts from 5th week to the 17th week, there is conversion of the endodermal tubules to the terminal bronchioles. Okay, I again repeat, the endodermal tubules are converted into the terminal bronchioles and it is surrounded by a modest network of capillary. This modest word is highly important. Okay, so it is uh, it is surrounded by modest capillary network. Now, during the pseudoglandular phase, respiration is impossible and it is incompatible with life. Okay, now talking about the third phase, which is the canalicular phase, which lasts from 16th week to the 25th week. Canalicular phase, in canalicular phase, there is majorly conversion of the terminal bronchioles into the respiratory bronchioles, which are further converted into alveolar ducts. So alveolar ducts are formed in the canalicular phase, which is from week 16 to week 25. Now, since in the pseudoglandular phase, it was surrounded by the modest network, in the canalicular phase, it is surrounded by the prominent capillary network. Am I clear? Now, in canalicular phase, the airway diameter increases, the respiration is capable at 25th week and the pneumocytes develop at week 20. Okay, so the pneumocytes basically develop at week 20 and the respiration is capable at week 25. Is this clear? Now, talking about the saccular phase, Saccular phase is from week 26 to the birth. Okay. Now in saccular phase, there are alveolar ducts which get converted into the terminal sacs. Now these terminal sacs are separated by primary septation. Okay. Remember that these terminal sacs are separated by primary septation. The alveolar phase is from the 36th week to the 8 years of age. Okay. So it is it continues even after birth. Now, what happens in the alveolar phase? In the alveolar phase, the terminal sacs which are formed in the saccular phase get converted into adult alveoli. 
okay and this conversion is due to secondary septation primary septation leads to formation of terminal sacs adult alveoli is by secondary septation now one important point is whenever in utero or the fetus inside the womb the breathing occurs by aspiration or expulsion of the amniotic fluid okay so basically the breathing occurs via aspiration and expulsion of the amniotic fluid now due to this there is an increase in the vascular resistance during gestation am i clear but whereas at birth the fluid gets replaced with air and hence there is a decrease in the pulmonary vascular resistance okay now this is the major cause why the air causes a decrease in the pulmonary vascular resistance now one point to remember is at birth there are approximately 20 to 17 million alveoli present but when the person is at 8 years old there are approximately 300 to 400 million alveoli present in the lungs am i clear so we have covered the five stages that is the embryonic pseudoglandular cannulicular saccular and alveolar phases of lung development now let me just show you this diagram this is the brief overview of embryonic phase the pseudoglandular phase cannulicular phase saccular phase and alveolar phase the formation of the surfactants and the various weeks okay now a lot of phases overlap each other correct so this is very clear demarcation or clear presentation of the different phases and its timeline is this clear now talking about the various congenital lung malformations or the congenital pathology related to respiratory embryology are the first one is pulmonary hypoplasia and the second one is bronchogenic cysts now these are the two lung malformations okay now in pulmonary hypoplasia there is a poorly developed bronchial tree and there is abnormal histology is this clear so there is poor development of bronchial tree and there is abnormal histology now pulmonary hypoplasia is associated with a diaphragmatic hernia which is usually left sided and it is congenital so it is congenital diaphragmatic hernia which is usually left sided and there is also presence of oligohydramnios or bilateral renal agenesis via porter sequence i have already covered the porter sequence in renal pathology module so please check that out i'll again repeat that it is majorly associated with congenital diaphragmatic hernia and bilateral renal agenesis now talking about the bronchogenic cysts bronchogenic cysts are caused by abnormal budding of the foregut and dilatation of terminal or large bronchi so it is budding of the foregut and dilatation of the terminal or the large bronchi now it is discrete round sharply filled fluid filled density on chest x ray this is the classic presentation so please remember each word of it that is discrete round sharply filled fluid filled densities on the chest x ray now if there is presence of air filled then it means that these bronchogenic cysts are infected am i clear now generally bronchogenic cysts are asymptomatic but can drain poorly and it can cause airway compression or respiratory infections okay so it can cause airway compressions or recurrent respiratory infections is this clear so we have covered the various congenital lung malformation that is pulmonary hypoplasia and bronchogenic cyst now talking about one of the most important pathologies related to the congenital system in respiration is neonatal respiratory distress syndrome that is n r d s okay neonatal respiratory distress syndrome now neonatal respiratory distress syndrome basically occurs because of surfactant deficiency i have already covered the surfactant use in 
types of cells which is produced basically by the type 2 pneumocytes but surfactant deficiency leads to increase in the surface tension and hence causes alveolar collapse okay now alveolar collapse appears like a ground glass appearance on the lung field as you can see here in this chex x-ray it is very clearly visible a ground glass appearance okay Now, the major risk factors of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome include prematurity, maternal diabetes due to increase in the fetal insulin level or C-section delivery. Now, when, when a person, uh, when a primary gravida is performed a C-section delivery, there is a decrease in the fetal glucocor glucocorticoids and hence there is decreased production of surfactants. It is less stressful than the vaginal delivery. Okay, so the three major risk factors include prematurity, maternal diabetes, and C-section delivery. Now, what is the treatment of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome? If it is detected prior to the birth, then maternal steroids are recommended. Whereas, if it is detected after birth, then exogenous surfactants for the infants are required. Is this clear? Now, the therapeutic supplementation of oxygen can result in three major abnormalities that is retinopathy of prematurity, intraventricular hemorrhage and bronchopulmonary dysplasia which is abbreviated as R for retinopathy of prematurity, intraventricular hemorrhage and bronchogenic dysplasia we remember as rib. Now, what is the screening test for fetal lung maturity? The major screening test includes lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio. Now, let me tell you that the lecithin levels keep on increasing, whereas the sphingomyelin levels peak at the week 30 and then starts falling. Okay, so when the lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio is greater than 2, there is proper formation of lung or a healthy lung. Whereas, when the lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio is less than 1.5, then it is predictive of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Is this clear? So, these are the two major values. Now, there are multiple other screening tests like the foam stability index or the surfactant albumin ratio to detect neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Now, whenever a person is presented with persistently low oxygen tension, it is at a very high risk of PDA. Now, PDA is patent ductus arteriosus. Please check out the congenital pathology module of CVS to learn more about PDA. Okay, so we have covered major development of lung and various congenital anomalies of the respiratory system. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.